Welcome to this untouched planet that resembles Earth so much that you can even breathe without a space suit. But don't relax just yet. Within a few hours, things take a turn for the worse. Tests show your blood's contaminated with prions, tiny proteins with the wrong shape, forcing human proteins to also transform. Such a chemical glitch happening in your imperfect body is totally deadly, meaning that colonizing this toxic planet is practically impossible. Kim Stanley Robinson described this grim space expansion in his 2015 novel titled Asterisk Aurora Asterisk, also shedding light on another answer to the famous Femi paradox. Named after the novel, the Aurora effect suggests that no civilization survives in space because whatever its representatives look like, they are biologically incapable of living there. High-tech ships and suits won't change this. So, if we really want to colonize space beyond virtual realms, we'll have to take evolution into our own hands and seriously alter our bodies. What exactly do we need to do with our organisms to go from Homo sapiens to Homo galacticus? NASA believes that to conquer space, humans first need to tackle two issues, microgravity and high-energy cosmic radiation. Both affect astronauts even in Earth's orbit as soon as they reach the International Space Station. We're so adapted to our planet's conditions that we rapidly lose bone and muscle mass in zero gravity. This may lead to fractures and overall cardiovascular degeneration. That's why astronauts have to do hours of exercise daily, but it's still just a temporary fix. So NASA's already considering gene therapy using the CRISPR mechanism. Simply put, for long space flights, astronauts will be artificially endowed with genes that let their bones and muscles regenerate and recover better with fewer exercises. However, even CRISPR can't modify our finely tuned vestibular system, which must distinguish up from down. Even trained astronauts occasionally lose spatial orientation in zero gravity and make mistakes that could result in disaster on lengthy missions. So perhaps in the future, we should take a cue from the heroes of the famous space opera Asterisk Crest of the Stars Asterisk by Japanese author Hiroyuki Marioka. There, all representatives of the ABH Empire, which is actively conquering space, have a special organ on their foreheads for orientation in space. Essentially, it's a third eye with over 100 million receptors connected to a special brain area for processing spatial information. However, these and other adaptations to microgravity came to the ABH through total genome editing and reproduction in test tubes. This seems to be true, as natural childbirth outside of Earth is almost certainly impossible due to high levels of radiation, which the fetus is extremely sensitive to. Even an adult's DNA won't hold up against brutal cosmic radiation, meaning that cancerous tumors will develop throughout the body within a single decade. Moreover, the same fate threatens Mars settlers lacking a protective magnetic field. Currently, NASA medical consultants propose using the same CRISPR technology to insert genes that can quickly repair DNA from radiation-resistant microorganisms into future colonists. But let's face it, this is like trying to reinforce and rebuild a burning house without putting out the fire. If there's no significant breakthrough in creating lightweight materials with reliable radiation protection, we have to make some extremely radical decisions. As the American writer Frederick Pohl predicted quite long ago, in 1976, he published the truly revolutionary sci-fi novel Asterisk Man Plus Asterisk, where he first described the process of human adaptation to Martian conditions using cybernetic implants. The main character, Roger Torraway, gradually has his vital body parts, skin, skeleton, and even sensory organs replaced with artificial enhanced analogues. As a result, Roger becomes an insect-like cyborg and stops considering himself human. Moreover, in this form, he can't return to Earth because he can no longer breathe there and would suffer severe sensory shock. Imagine how much needs to be sacrificed to colonize the nearest planet. But I believe scientists will eventually find a way to fundamentally adapt humans to space conditions by combining different methods. Actually, a future similar to this is depicted in the sci-fi universe of Asterisk EV Online Star. In this strategy game, humans colonize the solar system over hundreds of years, modifying themselves very gradually and cautiously. It was only about small brain implants to enhance thinking for better orientation and quicker decision-making in a world of high speeds and constant competition for resources. Physiological problems of microgravity and radiation were solved purely through the advancement of medicine, in other words, 
through accessible and effective reconstructive therapy. However, even if we won't undergo such significant changes as the ABH Empire representatives or asterisk man plus asterisk characters, the journey to the stars will require much greater sacrifices. That's mainly because of the immense distances between systems, which are difficult to even imagine. Yes, the nearest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri, lies slightly over for light years away. If we shrink our Sun to the size of a dollar coin, Proxima Centauri would be the size of a penny and placed about 710 kilometers away. So if the dollar ends up in Detroit, the penny would be in New York. But at this scale, you definitely can't just hop behind the wheel and cover this distance in a few hours. If the Sun were a dollar in Detroit, you'd be a helpless microbe somewhere near the coin and within your short life of 12 hours, you won't even manage to crawl out of the city. In space, ships are also limited. Accelerating to even 10% of the speed of light by conventional means is very difficult. That's why the European Space Agency plans for the future exploration of stars through the Hyperion project, which is working on the so-called generation ship. Just like in Kim Stanley Robinson's asterisk Aurora asterisk, it's designed to accommodate 40,000 people, and only their descendants will reach the destination hundreds of years later. The journey is extremely dangerous, because colonists born on the ship might refuse the mission altogether and instigate a revolt. At least, the potential risk is pretty high. So why not try to somehow transform those who choose to move to a distant star? In Richard K. A. Morgan's series of science fiction novels called Asterisk Altered Carbon Asterisk, space travelers look like this, they are known as cortical stacks, essentially special flash drives with uploaded human consciousness. It can either be sent to an uncharted system on a ship that will fly for thousands of years or transmitted much faster than light to any colony where the traveler will be recorded back onto a stack and inserted into a new biological body. However, individuality may be lost, as you'll eventually have countless copies of yourself scattered across the galaxy. Maybe we'd better resort to biological life extension methods, don't you think? In Asterisk Dune Asterisk, the legendary book series by Frank Herbert, absolutely all characters are enhanced humans who can live for centuries. This ability lets them be fully involved in interstellar politics. In Asterisk Dune Asterisk, prolonged life became possible thanks to the genetic engineers of the Bin Tleilax. Most likely, they learn to halt chromosome degeneration in human cells, thus greatly slowing down aging. Besides, these experts could basically custom-design colonists, perfectly adapting them to the planet's conditions. The Bin Tleilax could easily have saved the settlers from asterisk aurora asterisk from the poisonous influence of microscopic prions. The most dramatic changes are undergone by navigators who are tasked with plotting complex routes through hyperspace. Indeed, these creatures were once humans. These horrific mutations into mermaid-like beings are caused by consuming large quantities of melange. This rare substance not only extends life but is also necessary to activate hyperspace navigation, enabling complex calculations. In Asterisk Dune Asterisk, people don't use supercomputers due to an AI uprising. Yet, even without such problems in the future, living analogues of electronic systems may become essential for interstellar travel. Even now, during missions to Mars and other planets, various probes are often bombarded by high-energy cosmic rays, sometimes leading to errors in the onboard computers. What if the same thing happens in deep space? If a catastrophe can be prevented by a mutant navigator in an aquarium with chemicals, future interstellar travelers will definitely order it from genetic engineers. However, fictional worlds also warn us that these adaptations can go too far. In Asterisk EVE Online Asterisk, the Jovians seized a large portion of the star systems in New Eden, solving every problem through radical DNA editing and implantation. Any modifications were permitted, so within a few hundred years, the Jovians began to look like aliens compared to ordinary people. But the price for interstellar expansion proved too high their still human brains simply couldn't handle all these changes. They were struck by the so-called Jovian disease, a mysterious genetic syndrome that inevitably led to madness and death, and all attempts to cure it failed. As a result, the Jovian Empire declined and isolated itself from the rest of the peoples of New Eden. However, in my opinion, even such horrific examples are unlikely to stop the progress of human transformation outside of Earth. 
Like it or not, numerous new states will inevitably emerge in the endless vastness of space. This will lead to wars and arms races, so there's simply no chance for human biology to remain the same as it was on our comfy home planet. Indeed, the trio of Brits Brian Ansell, Rick Priestley, and Richard Halliwell realized this back in the 80s and created a grim future of tabletop games and novels called Asterisk Warhammer Asterisk, where the Imperium of Man has been waging bloody conquests for millennia with the help of deeply modified space marines. They possess a total of 19 genetic implants, turning them into perfect killing machines and compensating for the vulnerabilities of the regular human body. Each marine is transplanted with a second heart to increase endurance and physical strength, and the ribs around it fuse to create a large bone shield. A special gland implanted into the brain through the nose is responsible for this. It also forces the body to grow and accumulate muscle mass until the warrior reaches almost 2.5 meters in height. Such a giant needs a lot of energy, so thanks to other implants, he can eat and digest almost anything. Meanwhile, the space marine can go without sleep for hundreds of hours. Specifically, different parts of his brain rest in turn, maintaining prolonged combat readiness. If he's severely wounded in battle, for example, if an arm is torn off, the bleeding will instantly stop, and the body will receive a massive dose of stimulants to continue fighting. In the case of a truly fatal injury, the space marine will be covered with a protective film and fall into a coma until help is provided. But if the enemies manage to capture this killing machine, special glands in the prisoner's mouth will produce a powerful acid that can dissolve even steel bars. Essentially, this is a Frankenstein's monster designed exclusively for combat and unable to function normally outside of it. However, space war is primarily not about infantry clashes on the surface of planets but fleet battles in interplanetary space. Here, the advantage goes to those who can more adept manage warships, meaning significantly improving coordination among crew members. The perfect option is eliminating this link altogether and making the ship literally the pilot's body. The best Jovian engineers from New Eden in Asterisk EVE Online Asterisk have been wrestling with this task for centuries, and they found a solution in an unexpected combination of three technologies. The main one is the hydrostatic capsule, which is meant to dampen the pilot's sense of their own biological body and become the perfect interface between them and the ship. But to use it, a person must undergo dozens of painful operations to install neuroimplants. Therefore, for this modification program, only the most enduring residents of New Eden, capable of running 60 kilometers without any enhancements, are selected. For pilots, unlike space marines, intelligence is also crucial, so every candidate must have a scientific degree in a technical field relevant to space travel and battles. All this, and the ability to orient quickly and make decisions, are tested in practice over two years of training flights. Ultimately, the pilot merges completely with their ship and feels it as their own body. This allows them to execute complex maneuvers reflexively without hesitation, but at the same time, it creates vulnerability. Damage to the hull is subjectively felt as pain, which must be endured without losing composure. If the ship is indeed destroyed, was all this rigorous training in vain? A true capsula is not created by a hydrostatic capsule but by two other key technologies. Their body is replicated through cloning, and their mind is replicated through a transneural scanner. If, during a battle, the ship sustains excessive damage and the integrity of the hydrostatic capsule is compromised, the pilot's brain will be sliced and scanned in nanoseconds to preserve all memories and, most importantly, combat experience. So, the recently deceased capsula will instantly wake up at the nearest space station, ready to get revenge against the wrongdoers. Killing such a pilot in the future is practically impossible, only enraging them. It is these elite beings that all players in Asterisk EV Online Asterisk control. However, to come as close as possible to the status of Asterisk Homo Galacticus Asterisk, we'll have to not only transform into super soldiers and immortal pilots, but also adapt our bodies to other challenges on the unfathomable galactic scales we face today. According to astronomers, of the 400 billion stars in the Milky Way, only 7%, that is, 28 billion, belong to the same type as our Sun. Near them, according to a recent estimate by the University of British Columbia, there could be up to 6 billion planetary systems similar to Earth. That is only 1.5% of the total. 
However, Venus is nominally an Earth-like planet, and it's located in the habitable zone of the Sun, but we certainly won't live in this hellish desert. So, it turns out that real galaxy colonization is impossible with only a very limited number of truly Earth-like planets being settled. We need to broaden our options. This is exactly what at least a part of humanity did in Dan Simmons' Asterisk Hyperion Asterisk series. After a horrific disaster left Earth in ruins, not all refugees from it sought shelter on habitable exoplanets. Some took equipment for genetic engineering and cybernetic enhancements on their ships and went far from the colonies to truly settle the galaxy. Thus, the Oua race appeared, who artificially adapted their bodies for permanent living on space stations like Dyson spheres. These people have very elongated body parts, where the legs are essentially an extra pair of hands with flexible fingers for grabbing objects in microgravity conditions. Meanwhile, the main hands have webs to make it easier to paddle through zero gravity. To save energy on heating, some OUs cover their bodies with fur. It's like evolution in reverse, especially since they also use a tail, not a biological one, but a mechanical one. It's an extra limb for clinging to walls in zero gravity. Most astonishingly, the first prototype of such a tail has already been tested by engineers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's planned to control its bending and adherence to surfaces using a vest with electronic sensors, but it's not excluded that in the distant future, it will be easier for our descendants to grow such tails through genetic manipulation. Especially since some OUs from Asterisk Hyperion Asterisk went much further in their adaptations. These so called angels don't even need space stations. They're fully protected from harsh radiation and the vacuum of space with living armor similar to that of Earth's beetles, allowing them to feed on the light of any star thanks to their large wings covered with solar panels. At the same time, these serve as antennas for bio radio transmitters in the head, enabling communication over great distances. Along with these and many other augmentations, such space angels are most adapted to live near any star in the galaxy. However, the most challenging task at such scales is not even adapting to the harsh conditions of space but maintaining some semblance of a single civilization. In the unfathomable expanses of the galaxy, only one thing can ensure this, technology for faster than light or even instantaneous communication. In Asterisk EVE Online's Asterisk New Eden, this became possible through the use of quantum entanglement effects. But for representatives of one faction, mere communication through faster-than-light channels was not enough, so they resorted to radical modification. These beings, if we can call them that, are known as the Triglavian Collective. Essentially, they are a hive mind capable of maintaining integrity across an entire galaxy. Individual minds within it are like neurons in our brain, significant but not viable on their own. Perhaps that's why the Triglavians so diligently hide their faces. Without the need to speak face to face, they are presumably replaced with cybernetic sensors devoid of any expression. Such a terrifying device allowed the Triglavians to populate the most remote systems of New Eden, teeming with deadly dangerous anomalies known as the Abyssal Dead Space. So, to become true Homo Galacticus, do we have to forsake our humanity, not just outwardly but inwardly as well? But our descendants might not necessarily need bodies at all. Futurist John Smart believes that space expansion will prove so challenging, even for genetic engineering, that humanity will pursue transcendence, meaning the digitization of the mind. This is reminiscent of asterisk altered carbon asterisk, with the crucial difference that the flash drives of consciousness won't be sent to other star systems because there will be no need. Instead, our digital descendants will live in the most comfortable virtual world, physically located anywhere. This is the path chosen by the Sleepers, a faction of the Joviants in Asterisk EVE Online Star. Instead of piloting ships like Capsulus, they immerse themselves in digital dreams. However, a century later, a non-human consciousness spontaneously emerged among them and began to erase the Sleepers to take over their preserved bodies and start real expansion in New Eden. So perhaps in the end, transcendence is a dead end. But are we doomed to explore space by changing our bodies anyway? What do you think?